We will never see the likes of Nelson Mandela again. But let me say to the young people of Africa and the young people around the world, you too can make his life work your own. President Obama today at the memorial service for former South African President Nelson Mandela. The political reaction in this country to Mr. Mandela's death has been one of near universal praise for him and for the example he set throughout his life. And as nice as that reaction feels, it would be weird and wrong if that reaction obscured the uncomfortable historical fact that support for Nelson Mandela's political cause, support even for Nelson Mandela's personal freedom in his lifetime, was no sure bet in America, especially on the American right. And this is something that has sort of disappeared down the memory hole, but if you needed to be reminded of it, you can look no further than the American far right today. Here, for example, is the cover of this week's edition of the World Net Daily magazine. They have one. Uh, this is their commemorative Nelson Mandela edition. See? Icon. Get it? Nelson Mandela was a con man. He was a communist wolf in sheep's clothing who managed to fool the world. He was a con artist. World Net Daily ran an online poll last week just after Mr. Mandela passed, asking their readers, how do you assess the life and work of Nelson Mandela? The leading response by a long margin was this one. He was a violent communist revolutionary who never should have been released from prison. Wow. In the mid-1980s, as most of the American political world was rallying to Nelson Mandela's side and uniting against the South African government, the political right in this country was in the midst of a big civil war on this issue. The Republican president at the time, Ronald Reagan, was adamantly opposed to sanctions against the apartheid government. He had serious backup from the religious right, which amazingly found itself in solidarity, in solidarity with South Africa's racist government. Democratic members of Congress were drawing up sanctions against South Africa's racist apartheid government, and there was the Reverend Jerry Falwell, arm in arm with South Africa's president. Falwell will return to the United States to lead a television campaign urging American companies to invest in South Africa and urging the Senate to vote against economic sanctions next month. Urging investment in South Africa, not divestment, but investment. At that point, Nelson Mandela had been in jail for more than 20 years, and American conservatives, primarily on the religious right, were leading the charge against him and his African National Congress, leading the charge in support of the apartheid government. And it was not just Jerry Falwell, it was also televangelist Pat Robertson, who's taking up the anti-Mandela cause. He said, quote, the blacks in this country have made this whole matter into an extension of the U.S. civil rights movement. I don't think they understand what they're dealing with. The religious right was joined by their allies in Congress, among them Republican Senator Jesse Helms of North Carolina, who filibustered a bill in the Senate to impose sanctions against South Africa. They were also joined by their ally, future Vice President Dick Cheney, who was then just a backbench Republican congressman from Wyoming, but one who was willing to take a stand against sanctions and divestment. The Conservative Heritage Foundation argued in the 1980s that the U.S. should stop advocating for the release of Nelson Mandela. President Reagan, of course, vetoed the sanctions bill against South Africa. Eventually, his veto was overridden by Congress, including by Republicans who disagreed with him. Those sanctions did put extraordinary pressure on the South African government, and Nelson Mandela was released from prison after 27 years. But even though it may seem now that opposing Nelson Mandela is something that couldn't have possibly happened in this country, it did. And it didn't go away when Nelson Mandela came to the U.S. in 1994 to deliver a joint address to Congress. One Republican congressman from California called the invitation to Mandela a national disgrace. And Jesse Helms, the one who filibustered the bill that called for Nelson Mandela's release, Jesse Helms turned his back on Nelson Mandela during his visit to the U.S. Capitol. That history has been mostly lost down the memory hole. But on days like this, it is an uncomfortable thing to remember. But it is the truth.